My fellow citizens and residents of Nevis, I speak to you as Premier of Nevis on the unfolding situation with the COVID-19 pandemic in our country. As you would be aware, the Honorable Prime Minister made a formal address to the nation on the evening of Friday 11th June 2021. I support the Prime Minister's position, which has become necessary due to the outbreak of this dreaded disease being currently experienced in our sister island of St. Kitts. As reported since May 19, 2021, when case 46 was detected, the island of St. Kitts thus far has experienced 110 positive cases in the past three weeks, and it is now clear that there is some element of community spread occurring on St. Kitts. We empathize with our brothers and sisters on St. Kitts and those families affected by this deadly disease and ask all of us to keep them in our prayers as we seek to battle this pandemic together. At the same time on Nevis, we have not had a positive case since March 16, 2021, when we recorded case number 14. It seems at this point, therefore, based on the available evidence, that the spread being experienced is localized to our sister island of St. Kitts. I emphasize at this point, since we know not what tomorrow might bring, and this disease has shown itself to be very unpredictable. We are all aware of the oneness of our people and that what affects any of us affects all of us. Our people move freely across the two mile stretch of ocean that separates us. We are in every sense, one country and one people bound by history, by family, by culture and by law. We must look out for each other and be our brother's keeper and our sister's helper at all times. Brothers and sisters, part of looking out for each other is also protecting each other from the deadly COVID-19 disease. Thus far, we have closed the schools in Nevis in support of the national effort. We have restricted our buses to 50% passenger capacity and impose a curfew on divisions all in support of the national effort. My government has demonstrated that it recognizes and supports the position that we are all in this together. But in all that we do, we must not lose sight of the fact that I and my cabinet were put here by the will of Almighty God and by the people of Nevis to serve them to the best of our ability. Serving them means listening to them and seeking to make decisions which are in their best interests while not harming the national interests. To this end and after careful deliberations, I have advised the Honorable Prime Minister that government offices and businesses on Nevis shall remain open, provided that all protocols as to mask wearing, physical distancing, and hand sanitizing are in place. All workers then should report to work on time and wearing their masks. It will be for the individual businesses to determine how best to schedule their workers to ensure the overall objective of keeping Nevis safe. Our small business sector has been the hardest hit by this COVID-19 pandemic, and I'm fearful that if forced to close now, when there are no COVID cases in Nevis, many may never reopen. I have consulted with the chairman of the board of the Nevis Air and Seaports Authority, which manages the Charleston Ferry Dock and the Wally Water Taxi Pier, and through the team at NASPA, initiated an urgent discussion with the ferry and water taxi operators. The purpose of this discussion was to restrict the movement of ferries and water taxis and to require that only essential travel be undertaken, such as travel for work, essential services such as police, fire, health and prison services, and travel for medical reasons, such as our patients requiring dialysis on St. Kitts at this time. These restrictions will prevent persons moving between the islands only for leisure or to engage with friends or loved ones. To put it differently, if you have no urgent need to move between St. Kitts and Nevis, then please do not attempt to do so. I am pleased to report tonight that the chairman of NASPA has advised that all ferries have voluntarily decided to suspend their services. However, WESC Agency has agreed to do a single round trip in the morning and one in the evening via MV Mark Twain, but restricted only to essential travelers. The water taxis equally have voluntarily decided to suspend their services except for charters. 
I thank all the ferry and water taxi owners and operators for this patriotic gesture on their part to keep us all safe and prevent the spread of this deadly disease. I also thank WESC Agency for agreeing to provide the sole but essential service during this difficult time. Given the limited capacity of the healthcare system in Nevis to respond to any outbreak of this disease in our community, we urge our people to continue to act responsibly. My government will continue to do all in our power to protect our people. As for the other measures announced by the Honorable Prime Minister, those will be enforced in Nevis in their full rigor. To be clear, for the next 14 days, the island of Nevis will have a curfew from 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. each day as announced. For the next 14 days, there will be no mass gatherings allowed, meaning no parties or fets or large gatherings of any kind. For the next 14 days, the beaches will be restricted to exercise only. In other words, no parties or picnics on the beaches. For the next 14 days, restaurants can open, but will be restricted to takeaway and delivery service only. This, of course, does not apply to restaurants and hotels catering for their in-house guests. For the next 14 days, businesses should encourage workers to work from home where possible. For the next 14 days, gaming establishments will be closed. For the next 14 days, buses will continue to operate at 50% capacity with adequate physical distancing and mandatory mask wearing and hand sanitizing on board. Our police and authorities will issue tickets and summonses where necessary for those who refuse to abide by the restrictions. For the avoidance of doubt, our people are still allowed to attend church services and undertake their business during the hours of 5 a.m. and 6 p.m. each day. Our construction workers are still permitted to go to work. I, however, urge everyone else not to leave your home unless you absolutely have to. There is no need at this difficult time for drinking and liming and carousing. Please stay home unless you must go out for work or some other essential purpose. Brothers and sisters, you note that I have thus far avoided the use of the dreaded word lockdown. I have done so because at this stage, with no cases on Nevis, there is only a need for enhanced restrictions as a precautionary measure. If, however, cases of COVID-19 do emerge on Nevis within our community, then more stringent measures, including the nuclear option of a lockdown, might become necessary. We have been adrift on this uncertain and deadly tide of COVID-19 now for the past 15 months in our beloved country. As examples throughout the world and region have showed us, it is unwise for any of us to declare that the battle has been won. The recent outbreak in our sister St. Kitts is manifest evidence that despite careful and prudent management of this pandemic, even the slightest mistake can plunge our people into serious peril. I therefore urge you yet again to get vaccinated against this deadly disease. As of yesterday, some 4,855 persons on Nevis had received the first dose, and some 2,632 persons are fully vaccinated. Our target population for vaccination is 8,564, which means that we still have some considerable distance to go before we can truly declare victory over this disease. A time comes to every man and nation when we must decide. I believe that that time is now. This is not a time for rancor or obstinacy. This is not a time for us to get serious about protecting our families, our communities, and our beloved island. I therefore urge you to get vaccinated at your local health centers, including our Saturday clinics, where we have extended hours of operation to afford each of us the maximum opportunity to get vaccinated. Let us not wait until this deadly virus strikes us at our homes to say, I wish I had known. Please, my brothers and sisters, I urge you to act and to act now. The monstrous murder of COVID is at our doorstep, and we must do all within our power to keep it at bay. Let us say no to COVID and yes to vaccination. The life we save might well be our own. I end by asking for your prayers for our beloved island and country. 
We have done well through the hard work of our Federal Task Force and our Nevis Task Force, and through steady and sober leadership, which has been willing to listen and to take guidance. But above all, we have done well because of God's undeserved grace and abiding mercy towards us. I therefore urge all of us to fall on our knees and continue to ask Jehovah God for his protection, his guidance, and his grace. My brothers and sisters, I wish you good night. And may we all together pray for brighter days for our beloved Nevis and the wider Federation. Thank you and God bless you.